learning from one thing, from the virtues. In the life of David, that made God to give him a glorious future. Now, in the first service, we saw gratitude that David was a thanksgiver. We took time. And I told you that thanksgiving in the first service, that thanksgiving uh, is, uh, I said, okay, go back line and watch it for you to understand. Let's go to the one today because of the one, uh, the time we have. Now, still studying David, you know, we'll be learning from the important virtues that help him see his future. Important virtues. And in this service, we are looking at forgiveness. Now, listen. I took time to study the life of David. Kaya, I never saw any man that had a forgiving heart like in David. I did not see anyone in the Bible that has, apart from Jesus our Lord, that had a forgiving heart like David. No wonder God was able to secure his future for him. No wonder God was able to secure the future of David for him. Listen. Our Lord Jesus in the Bible shows us that it is only the gateway to a lifestyle of mercy from God is forgiveness. Jesus said there is no how you can have access to the mercy of God if you are not a kind of a person, a Christian that knows how to offer mercy. So if you don't offer mercy, forget about you receiving mercy. And listen, one of the reasons why David enjoyed great mercies of God, he was chosen for kingship, not because he qualified, but by, 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 by the mercy of God. He was chosen for kingship. Now, apart from that, God established his family to be king over Israel forever. By the mercy of God. David fought with battles. In fact, there, there's nobody in the East Bible of history that fought battles like David. He was never wounded for one, for in, in one battle. By the mercies of God. In fact, when David committed sin... The sin of adultery, he committed the sin of murder. And when he repented, God said to him, I will have mercy on you. You know, so great. Because David was a man that practiced forgiveness. Let's look at what Jesus our Lord said before we begin to look at the mess, uh, how he showed mercy. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18 from verse 21 to verse 35. Matthew 18, 21 to 35. Now, put that on screen. Let's go to it. Matthew chapter 18. We have a lot of scriptures to read in this service. So, those of you that are behind the machines, you have to be very swift today. Matthew chapter 18 from verse 21 to verse 35. Are you there? Now, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times, because you have preached so much about forgiveness, how many times shall I forgive my brother? When he sins against me. Up to seven times. He asked. Up to seven times. Therefore the, the kingdom. Uh -uh, Jesus answered. I tell you not seven times Peter. But 77 times. 77 times. How do you count 77 times? You sin against me one. You sin against me two. You sin against me three. You sin against me four. You sin against me five. How do you count? You know, what God was, Jesus was actually trying to tell Peter is that Peter, you can't count things. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, look at this, is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servant. He now told the servant, bring your record book. And he began the settlement. A man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. This man is owing 10,000 talents. So it was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. Sell everything he has. Both him and his wife and children paid the debt. The servant fell on his knees. Jesus was showing us the, how messy he is. Uh, he fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me. He begged. He begged. The, uh, be patient with me. He begged. I'm also begging you. Be patient with me. Let me read. We are not yet through with the verse 26. Be patient with me. He begged. And I will pay back everything. Now that man was begging the master. Now let's now see what happened in the next, next verse. Verse 27. The servant's master took pity on him. Cancelled the debt. And let him go. Now, he didn't stop there. Jesus now said, 
Look at this. He said, but when that servant went out, the one who was shown mercy, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed and, and, be, and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. He grabbed him on the neck. You better pay back what you owe me. You better pay back what you owe me. You better pay back what you owe me. His fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me. I will pay you back. Be patient with me. I will pay you. Boy, he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown where? Into prison until he could pay the debt. He threw him into prison, locked him up until that man paid. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master. Every the man you showed me to refused to show mercy to his fellow servant. Then the master called the servant in. You, you wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me. Verse, next verse, next verse, next verse. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant? I cancelled your debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant? Just as I had on you. We are suffering at 35. In anger, his master turned him over to the jailer to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed summary verse 35 this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you what i didn't hear you unless you what unless you what unless you what unless you what now he said this is exactly how our heavenly father will treat you so it means that hear me for Forgiveness is compulsory. Forgiveness is not uh, 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 an advice. It's an instruction. As a child of God, we are told by God to forgive. Now, let's go deeper. What is forgiveness? What is forgiveness? It is when you decide to waive the negative feeling. I come again. It is when you decide to wave the negative feeling crossing your heart because of the wicked deeds of people or the hurting deeds of people. Now, forgiveness is when you decide to say, ah, ah, I will wave away the negative feeling, the bad feeling I'm having when people hurt me. Now, do you know that when people do some bad things to you, when somebody is hurting you, there's, there's a pain you feel in your heart. There's a way you feel. There's this feeling that you should do something back. You know, you should do something bad to the person that's offended you. For instance, somebody did, uh, 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 you gave you a promise, you know, for instance, like now you borrowed somebody money, the person refused to pay, and the person is trying to fight you, and things like that, and you are saying, no, I will not agree, we are going to do, you know, at that time that you are being hurt, there are several negative thoughts that crosses your mind. Negative thoughts. Now, these negative thoughts will be pushing you to want to revenge, to do back to you to them what they are doing to you. That's one of the things that crosses your mind. Now, when we talk about forgiveness, forgiveness is when you make up your mind, I will not respond to the negative feelings crossing my mind when I'm being hurt. I will not respond. Now, and Jesus gave this illustration. He said, look at this man. He was owing me money. He begged me, I forgive him. I didn't talk about the money again. I didn't discipline him because of the money. Somebody now owed him too. And the person started pleading. Instead of him to say, after all, God have shown, my master have shown me mercy. I am also to extend the mercy my master have shown me. He didn't. And the master said, for this you have done, you will be made to pay for everything that you have done. Every negative thing you have done, you will pay for it. Now, what am I saying this morning? Forgiveness is the gateway to God's mercies. Anyone that cannot forgive cannot have access to the mercy of God. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, it is clearly stated, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Which means, if you do not forgive those that trespass against you, your record of sin before God will remain there. Ah, and beloved, the Bible says if God decides to keep record of sin, who can stand? 
even as you are seated now, you are committing sin. Some of you are seated, you are not doing anything, but your mind is committing sin. Am I communicating? So David lived his life as a man that practiced pure forgiveness. How did I know? Let's look at some of the things that happened to him. It will help us to understand our topic more. Now, I want you to be very swift now. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 18, 8 to 11. Some of the, the, the hurts that David suffered. 1 Samuel 18, from verse 8 to 11. 1 Samuel 18, 8 to 11. We also see 1 Samuel 19, 1, 19, 9 and 10, 20 verse 1, 23 verse 15. Now let's go. 1 Samuel chapter 18. The Bible says Saul was very angry. This refrain galled him. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought. But me, with only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? Nine. We stop our thing. And from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. From that time on, we stop our An evil spirit from God came forcefully upon Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the harp, and he usually, as he usually did, Saul had the spear in his hand. Look at the first art. He had the spear in his hand. Show me verse 11, where David was busy playing the instrument to calm him down. The Bible says, I will pin David to the wall. He was not just throwing it, he was saying it. David was hearing, I will make sure I pin this David to the wall, and he threw it. Do you know that David did not respond? Though he left, he dodged it. But David did not respond. He did not bring, uh, uh, return evil deeds of King Saul with evil acts. Now look at another one. Let's go on. I'm going to show you so many. The next one. Chapter 19 verse 1. 1 Samuel 19 1. Look at this. Saul told his son, Jonathan, and all the attendants to kill David. But Jonathan was very fond of David. David had. Your daddy has made an announcement that they should kill me. Your daddy has made an announcement that they should kill me. You know, I wonder what the church of Jesus now is becoming. Today now you will see a Christian that attends mountain of fire living in this room. He has misunderstanding with a Christian that attends New Covenant Church in the other room. And the next thing, he will stand up in the morning and begin to say, every enemy of my progress, even you that fought me yesterday, fall and die! Fall and die! Fall and... Where did we get it from? The Bible did not say that servant did not owe his friend, his fellow servant. He owed his fellow servant. Now, which means that it is not possible for you to be on earth and people will not hurt you. See, I hear. The only place you can live where you will not be hurt is in heaven. But as long as you are living on earth, somehow, somehow, somebody somewhere, will offend you. It could be why you are driving on the road. It could be why you are riding on the bike. It could even be why you are seated at home. And you say, oh, praise God, they brought light. You want to go and on your fridge. Oh, God, they've taken it. You know that one is not strange in Nigeria. It is not possible for you to live your life without being hurt by somebody. Where am I? Next verse again. The next one. Chapter 19. 9, to 10, 9 and 10. Look at 9 and 10. All these things King Saul was doing to David. I will show you how he responded to David, I mean to, to Saul. Now and then. But an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul. And he was sitting in his house with his spear in his hand. Another time again. While David was playing the harp again as usual. Verse 10. Saul tried to pin him to the wall with his spear. But David eluded him. And Saul drove the spear into the wall. Made a good that night, David made a good escape. He still didn't stop. Move on 20, 20 verse 1. 20 verse 1. Chapter 20, verse 1. 
I'm waiting, I'm waiting. We don't have all we have a lot of things to study. Then David fled from now out at Ramah and went to Jonathan and asked him, What have I done? What is my crime? How have I wronged your father? He's trying to what? Alive. It means that David was aware, um, that Saul wanted to take his life. Go for that again. Read chapter 23, verse 15. Chapter 23 and verse 15. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. 23, 15. David was at Horeb in the desert of Seb. He learned that Saul had come out to what? I didn't hear you. Can do better to take his life. Let's now look at the response of David towards Saul. Go to 1 Samuel 24 now, and verse 3 to 7. 24, 3 to 7. 24, 3 to 7. 24, 3 to 7. He came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there, and Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the cave. Verse 4. The men said, This is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with him as you wish. Then David crept up unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's skirt. He got so close to Saul. Afterward, David was conscience stricken for he had cut off a corner of his robe. Move on. Move on. He said to this, his men, the Lord forbid that I should what? That I should do such. The Lord forbid that I should do such. If it is so many of you, today's Christian, we have more enemies than friends. Do you know why? We want to retaliate to every offense. But David said, I can't do this. I'm a child of God. I take the love of King Saul. He's an anointed man. All the while that David was doing this, he was taking his time to study David. And it was making David to, to gain access to more of God's mercy. Let me tap your neighbor. Say neighbor. I didn't hear you. Neighbor, this Thanksgiving as a true Christian. Say again, neighbor, practice Thanksgiving as a new Christian. Let's now go deeper. The, the dangers of unforgiveness. Now, if you refuse to forgive, let's look at the dangers you might suffer. Anyone that refuses to live a life of forgiveness, let's look at dangers he or she will suffer. Not even might will suffer. Now, and you know, like I told you, forgiveness is when you decide not to respond to the negative feelings you have when people hurt you. But if you refuse to forgive, it means that when people hurt you, you want to respond. You want to react. You want to practice teeth for that. You want to hold them bound. There are certain dangers you will suffer if you live in unforgiveness. Number one, it will, it will make you unpredictable even to yourself. Because it will prompt you to, to misbehave when your heart is full. Unforgiveness will make you unpredictable even to yourself. It's you, me, Dariji, Ongon, Kule, Trust, Tare, Tori, Ongon, Kule, Sopin, Kambay, Nimi, Leche. I will tell you a story as I go on. Do you know why? When you harbor things in your heart, you refuse to let people go in your heart. Once your heart is full, it will prompt you into the negative if care is not taken. I had the true life story of a young, or a young woman. She had issues with her husband. They have two children. They divorced. Now, after the, divo the, the, the divorce, the husband asked for the custody of the two children, two boys. They live in Australia. True life story. And the court granted the man custody because he had a good job, was a medical doctor. The young, man, the young lady didn't have a good job. Do you know that two years after their divorce, the man was in his house with the two children and his new wife. This, his former wife, came in the middle of the night. Nobody saw her. She entered the house. 
poured fuel all over the place and set the whole place on fire. She killed herself, the man, the two children, and the new wife. If you refuse to forgive, hear me, you will do terrible things. Once your heart is full, that's why the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Let go those things you are harboring. The more you harbor it in your heart, hear me, the more it will decay and degenerate into some terrible thing that you may not have control of. If you refuse to forgive, hear me, it will get to a point you will not be able to control yourself. I'm telling you, cases have and you will not be able to control yourself. Unforgiveness is demonic. That's why David didn't harbor in his heart. All the things that King Saul was doing. Though he went to Dodge, he, got a, he didn't come to King Saul's palace anymore. He went to hide himself, but he didn't retaliate. You know why he could not retaliate? He didn't store it in his mind. I told them in the first service this morning, when we were talking about Thanksgiving, that why is it that some people cannot live as Thanksgivers? Why is it that some people are ungrateful while some people are Thanksgivers? I said, the, th the thing is clear. It is whatsoever you choose to see that you see in abundance. For instance, if husband and wife are living together at home, if you choose to see this, the, the fault of your spouse, you will see plenty. If you choose to see the good aspect of your spouse's life, you will also see plenty. I gave them an illustration that I want to give you. We bought one car many years ago. Uh, uh, ah. I've forgotten the name of that. Uh, not, not Pastor, that red Jeep. Freelander. By the time I saw the car the first time, I was telling my wife, this car is not common. This car is not common. Let's buy. After buying that car, we now said, let's even see whether people are using this car. Because our focus was on Freelander. Freelander. We, were dis we discovered that every particular day, we were driving on the road, we kept seeing people using Freelander. That's what we are looking at. Then we sold that car. Later, we decided to go for one uh, uh, Mazda Millennium. As we bought that one, when I, the first day I saw it was the first day I saw it on the road. I've never seen this kind of car before. We are going to be the first kind of people to use it. And my wife said, okay, let's begin to look at the road. Let's see whether people are using this car. You know, The day we bought it, I was shocked. From that day, I started seeing it when I'm driving. Because that's what I'm looking for. Then, this one that we are using now, this Akura legend that we are using now, you know, I said, when we got it, the first place I saw it, that time I saw it, I saw maybe like one or two people that use it. And I told my wife, let's get this car. I love this car. It's not common. So, as we bought it, we started using it. Let's see whether people use this car. Beloved. Even on our street. Before we get to a level, we see like 10. Before we get, so we say it's like this is what everybody is using. This is not what everybody is using. That is what we are looking for. Anything you pay your attention to, you will see in abundance. So if you want to be seeing this fault of your spouse, you will see plenty. If you choose to be seeing the good part of your spouse, you will see plenty. So choose to see the right thing. Say here. What do you want to see? I will be saying, "Hon, we can't do fake bunny." Let it, let it, let it. That I could sing, commit to pay attention. It was so. We can't do fake bunny. They told us a story. I had it from uh, Mommy Olushile David. She said, "This couple we're having." Serious misunderstanding. They were always fighting. So they came for counsel. So at the counseling table, their counselor gave them two books. What in Yoruba we call Kolo. You know Kolo? The wooden one. The man now said, the counselor now told them, every day, at the end of each day, write what you see in your spouse. In a sheet of paper and put it inside the box. He told the man, write your own. He told the woman to be writing and gave them two weeks. That after two weeks, come back for your next session of counseling. So, as they came back in two weeks, their both box, boxes were full. 
The wife's son was full. The husband's own full. So the man said, let's open that of your wife first. They opened the wife's own. Well, number one, I don't know how he brushes his teeth. I always see this yellowish part of his teeth after he must have brushed. My husband is very dirty. They opened the second one. My husband is just too local. He will grab the toothpaste from the middle. They opened the third paper. It was clearly written. He does not even know how to use the cutlery. Anytime we are eating, I get irritated. They opened the fourth one. My husband is not romantic at all. They opened the fifth one. Can you imagine? He does not say good night whenever we are going to bed. Then they opened that of the man. The first paper they brought out, I love my wife. The second paper, my wife is beautiful. The third paper, there's nobody like this woman. The fourth one, I just love my wife. The counselor now stopped. He said, I've discovered the fault of your marriage. What is the fault? The wife decided to be looking for the fault of the man. Nobody is perfect. And as long as she opens her eyes like a tetoscope, she will see the jams that nobody is in. Let me tamper, touch your neighbor. Say forgive. Or else, like I said, you will become unpredictable. These people that you see that one day just came up and stabbed their spouse. It is because of the things they have harbored in their mind. It's not one that happened that day. Let's go. Don't let it stop. If you are storing it, you are building it. The day it will come out, ah, yeah, yeah. You yourself will be asking yourself, so I have, the, I have this cap capacity to do, to do this kind of evil? Tell your neighbor, say forgive. Number two danger, number two, it makes the mercy of God to be far away from you. God's word keeps saying the same measure of mercy we show is the same measure of mercy we attract. The same measure of mercy you, you give is the same measure of mercy you attract. If you refuse to forgive, you can never have access to the mercy of God. That's why you see that some people will pray for long hours, no, no result. And you see somebody pray for like one minute or two, you just begin to get results. Why? Answer to prayer is determined by your measure of mercy. Hello. Cheriki she kwe kan odun lori oke 5 hours lo nje kadu agba. Bo ba se le sanu si lo ma determine bi wo na se ra anu Olorun gba si. So many people are praying as are, are occupying great positions in God's house but because they are not merciful they don't have access to God's mercy. So many good things are supposed to reach them doesn't reach them. So if you don't show mercy, you can't have access to mercy. Now let's look at number, number three. Number three, it will limit you because there is, no, there is not a perfect person on that. Unforgiveness makes you throw people away. There is no perfect person anywhere. And me, I le No perfect person anywhere. Oh, this my house is this. I, I sack you. This my secretary is this. I, there is no perfect person anywhere. Anyone you see has something somewhere that is still working on. Even me that I'm your pastor. I have areas of my life that God is still working on. So if you are the type you are saying, I will not show mercy. I am tired. I'm... See, you will soon be alone. Because nobody is perfect. Can you imagine? Jesus' disciples, they were with him for three and a half years. That's Jesus himself, the word. I'm preaching Jesus now. But Jesus was preaching himself. He, they saw, these people saw miracles. Miracles. Jesus was arrested one night. Not one person remained. The only person that followed from distance. Jesus had him cursing himself. Say, I swear to God, if I know him, let thunder kill me. 
and Jesus turned Peter, yet he forgave them. If Jesus didn't forgive them, he won't return to them. Don't forget that all of them went back to what? To fishing. They left ministry. I want to move my style. Hold this for me, please. I want to move my style. I want to move my style. They left and went to do fishing. Jesus came back. These people didn't catch anything. He now said, Well done, friends. Go read that scripture. Well done, friends. Did you have any catch? They said, We didn't catch anything. He said, Why not cast your nets to the right side? As they cast the nets to the right side, Peter said, wait, 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 wait. I know this miracle. It has happened to me before. I know the person that can do it. Master, are you the one? The Bible says he jumped straight into the sea and was swimming towards Jesus. What attracted him back to Jesus? Jesus did not look at his sin. Some of you, you hold people by their mistakes too much. And if care is not taking, Oshimaku Wonikon. He was swimming back. Jesus, I'm coming. Up. Jesus, I'm... the Bible says he left the fish. Others pulled the net. They were coming with the net. But Peter went ahead. So you could forgive me. Upon that, you had me cursing myself that I didn't know you. So that you will not be left alone. Stop keeping record of sin. Say, I hear, say, I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear, I hear. Or have you seen anybody that is perfect before? Who have seen a perfect person? There is no perfect person anywhere. Abraham that is a friend of God. <laughs> Let's leave that one. Not for today. Number four. Number four. The fourth danger of unforgiveness is this. It will eventually affect your health. Because your inner mind will keep nursing wounds. Unforgiveness will eventually affect your health. I was sharing with one of the women. She left her husband and went with the children. So I met her on the road. She was not talking to me. I was talking to her. My sister, come back to your marriage. She was saying, no, pastor, you don't understand. I said, tell me what I don't understand. As she was talking to me, I told her two experiences. I said, see, you know what killed my mom? My mom and my dad separated from themselves, yes. My mom went with us, the children four of us she raised us but see the day my daddy returned i was in primary two when he left i was in ss2 when he returned he came with one bag that was raining that time they call it nigerian army bag they used to back it to school i'm talking about early 90s he came with a canvas for the other one the way we embraced the bag and the shoe he brought got my mommy offended that me that i've been raising you people from two years from you were in primary two when I, I started. Your daddy now came with one useless bag, one nonsense bag. All of you are now. I said, remove that bag. You put your bag as your pillow. You put your shoe beside yours. She felt so offended. She began to develop blood prayer. We tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. She couldn't come, come out come out of it. After many years, she died of cancer. Do you know that even the man that left lived longer than her? unforgiveness will affect your health. I now told this young lady, I said, see, these children that you have gone away with, don't be surprised. The day they see their father, they will run after him. He said, somebody also told me, I said, then why are you troubling yourself? Forgive! Let me tap your neighbor, say forgive. forgive. Go, go find out. People that have free mind, that doesn't have all sin, they don't usually get sick. That's what we call subconscious mind. Look up. That's what we call. Look, come, come, Mr. Agbenga. I'm rushing because of time. That's what we call subconscious mind. Now you have your conscious eyes. These eyes can see physically. Nose can see. You can hear. So can perceive. Ears can hear. But there's a part of you that is in the inside. Hear me. That even when this one is sleeping, that one is still walking. Now that is where most people don't get rest. When doctors say rest, I'm monsu. Monsu, a kilo had it blood pressure yinga. And Antisha and Ronu, me Ronu, all on me, I will be Shawama Mutun Jensen. Physical mouth, Lun Jeshawama, but it is subconscious. The one inside, the mind is still working. And if that one doesn't rest, your blood pressure cannot be normal. Ah, I have nurse here. Am I online? 
That's why so many people get to the hospital, they'll be asking, are you thinking? Is he not thinking? It's not that he's consciously thinking. There are several things he, he has trapped in his mind. I've been there before. Two years ago, I was battling with my blood pressure. 290 something. Over 180 something. The doctor screamed when I got there. Pastor, what is happening? I said, my mom died. My father died. I will wake up in the middle of the night. I will be thinking of how we, how, how will I call myself anointed if cancer will kill my mom? Why did I, you know, I was blaming myself for her death. I didn't know that I was killing myself in my mind. I will preach to you, but my subconscious mind was still thinking. You better free your mind. That's why I see, if you don't free your mind, you are the one in bondage. Not, not the person that offended you. That person that offended you will be free. You will be happy. But you will be free. You will be free. You will be So thank you. You will be cool. Lampard kilo de la roi. I've been laying in one few was by me. Okushuba. He said, Thank you, sir. Did I come to your house? It's the word of God. That's why at times when God gives me, I don't like to come and preach. Because after service, some people will say, it's a lie. Some people went to tell him. I don't go anywhere. What was I doing yesterday? I was eating fufu and egusi yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. Now, quickly, because of time, how can I conquer unforgiveness? It's conquerable. Only conquer. Even those of you watching me online, you can conquer it. Don't hold anybody in your mind. Number one. Now, to those of you who are not yet born again, you will have to first give your life to Christ if you are not saved. Now, this one, for those of you who are not born again, first give your life to Jesus so that Jesus can take over life. But from the second point, to those of you who are born again, make up your mind to forgive. Forgiveness is a choice. Make up your mind. Like me, I always tell my people here. I learned it from the late Bola Ige, the former governor of your state. He wrote in one of his books. I read that book. That book changed my mindset. He said, blessed are those that hope not, for they shall not be disappointed. Listen, it's not biblical. Biblically, the Bible says, faith is the assurance of things so far, and evidence of things not seen. In Christianity, we hope. But Bolaige was saying, when you are relating with man, blessed are you that hope not, for you shall not be disappointed. Now, if I expect that you can disappoint me, if you disappoint me, it won't disappoint me. It won't move me. But if I hope on, ah, Minister Gbenga, ah, it's Minister Gbenga, I hope on him. If you do something contrary, I will feel bad. So you know how I handle myself now? I see everybody as a potential traitor. So if you don't be disappoint me, I am surprised. I expect that you will offend me. Affect, so, so that I will, have, I will give forgiveness in advance. See I hear. Oh, yeah. Don't expect too much from anyone. Make up your mind to forgive in advance. Don't expect too much from anyone. Don't, I come again. Don't expect too much from anyone. So of you, one of the reasons why you can't forgive, you are expecting too much. What is about you? It's my husband. I know it's my husband. I, when my husband is coming, I know he will branch. Uh, I don't need to call him. I know he will branch. He will buy meat. He will buy some things for me as he's coming. And he gets home. You know, you women, they are, you're, you're, the thing that gets you uh, uh, offended are funny things. My husband got home and he didn't look at my face. And you are offended. My husband got home. He didn't even buy anything when he's coming. You are offended. What offends man is different from what offends the woman. 
But for you not to live in unforgiveness, don't expect from anything, anyone, from anyone. So that when they do it, you get surprised positively. Are you learning? Third way to conquer unforgiveness. Stop nursing the pain. Talk to matured counselors. Stop nursing the pain. I can handle myself. You can't handle yourself. Let me quickly tell you this story because of my time. Many years ago, a woman walked into my office. Ah, she was diagnosed of high blood pressure. She was depressed. And uh, the depression had even gone to the point that this woman had started talking rubbish. As she entered my office, it was her elder brother that brought her. The elder brother is a pastor somewhere. He now says, since she lives in this area, I want to commit you to a, a, a word-based church. So they entered my office. Are you pastor? I said, yes. What do you believe in? I told him. What's your scripture uh, backup? I told him. I want to give you my sister. So she sat down. Sir, when this woman finished telling me her story, it's something that you, should, you can cry. You can, you should, a person should cry for. She was married to this young man. She did everything to make this young man to become somebody. The young man now stood up one morning and told her, take care of our son, two-year-old boy. I'm going to Lagos. Let me go and look for a job. Once I'm okay, you know, once I get a job, don't worry, we'll communicate. It was not a GSM yet time. The man went to Lagos, joined mobile police force. She didn't know. Became a boss there. He turned home. As at that time, the boy was eight years old. Eight. That's, he went for six years. He left two-year-old boy. When the woman just woke up one morning and had a knock on her door. It was papers from the court. Divorce paper and custody paper. The man is seeking for divorce and that he wants custody of the only child. She put her face to my ego. The woman wept. She, she even, as she was telling me the story, she talked with me. I gave her time for four hours. I didn't respond. She was speaking for four hours. As she finished, you know what I told her? I said, Mrs. Temison. He said, sir, God will give you victory. She said, amen. I said, I'm not praying for you. I said, something me and you know that the end result of this is good. But do you want this victory to meet you in the grave? Do you want this man to eventually come back and kneel down at your tomb to ask for your forgiveness? She said, no. Stay alive to see your victory day. I use so many things to encourage her. She was encouraged. Okay, Pastor, what do we do about this uh, divorce letter? I said, no problem. I told her to, to go to the welfare. They went to welfare. They gave us some advice that if we get to the court, as they call the divorce case, she should just be screaming, I don't want to divorce my husband. I don't want to divorce my husband. The judge will be interested in hearing the case. So she went to Lagos. As they called the case, she kept screaming, I don't want to divorce my husband, no. The judge said, eh. But this is a divorce case. I think I should hear you. What happened? As she told the judge her story, eh? And it's a female judge. The judge said, is it because you're a mobile police officer you want to ride her? You know what we are going to do? I'm going to penalize you. She came back rejoicing because they told the man to be paying her. Do you now know that four years after this man returned to come and marry her? What if she did not express, she did not share what she was nursing in her mind? Talk out. And listen, when I say talk out, you know I told you, talk to matured believer. Somebody that can help you. Don't go and talk to someone that will implicate you. Like the case of one woman that said, my husband doesn't take care of me. My husband doesn't take care of me. She used to, he, now he has gone to buy a car for his mom. The friend said, eh, uloramoto fun yae, yae. He won't do any. Lost office, Lost disgrace, eh. Not knowing that from head office, they came for a meeting. The woman entered the office and started screaming. The general manager came out. What happened? They said, eh, 
Mr. So so and so. They brought him out. As he saw her husband, he grabbed the clothes and tore it. The boss just gave her, him termination of appointment letter. That since you are not capable to manage your marriage, you can't work here. The woman said by herself that that was the last day she saw her husband. The woman was now crying. Please, if you know where my husband is. If it is me too, do you think I will return to the house? You cannot wait for him to come. You said two issues. You went to disgrace him in the, in the office. So, if you are going to talk, talk to somebody that can help you. Somebody will say, how do I know? There is nobody that doesn't know who can help them. Because they don't know who can help them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, number five, number five, last, last one. Uh, number four, sorry. You keep praying that God should help you. The issue of un- unforgiveness requires prayer. Lord, help me conquer this nature. Lord, help me conquer it. And lastly, to conquer un- un- unforgiveness, think of the level of mercy you will gain from God if you choose to forgive. Think of the level of mercy you will gain. I believe if you consider the level of mercy you will gain, you will not want to lose it by showing, by, by refusing to forgive. If you consider the level of mercy you will gain, if you say I should tell you stories, we won't live here. If you say they have hurt you, if I tell you what they have done to me, Ah, there was one day, the first day and the last day I cried over a member leaving church. This person, I helped them to the point that I used my car. Eh? They needed money. I took my car documents to microfinance bank to borrow money for them. The day they left our church, it was just like, like play. I said, bro, you have been so long in that department, join another department. He just came to my office with his wife. Uh, sir, good morning, sir. We just said we should come and see you. I said, what is that, bro? Because I can't count the level of help. The wedding he did, I contributed 90%. The car he bought, I contributed 90%. When he needed money for something that could put him to shame, I told one of our dickness, please follow him the money. When it was time to pay, he took our dickness to court. Same touch you. He brought the uh, uh, legal documents to restrict our dickness from asking him for money for the money he borrowed. Uh, she borrowed him. I now call him Dickin. She was a big dickness in law court. He got him a yawi mimo machine duro. Dickness, why she thought she could wear anything? Ever look by let a lot of the lawyer. I see face dickness. Dickness said, Your man, be no good deal. What of her son? The king by all of my lady. Eh, what's my fair yard in microfinance? Because he could let her at my feet. I went there, I dropped my card document. And those people say, I pass I say, It's my son. They handed over the money over to me. We gave to Dickness. The day he left, I cried. You know why I was crying? I saw myself as a fool. But God told me that this work you are doing, if you don't have a forgiving heart, you won't go far. Go ask your fathers. Go and ask your The man that broke Abuja Church of Winners Chapel is the junior brother of the wife of the Jew. He set up the church opposite the, new, the former church. The, the junior brother of the wife. Left church and, and bought property opposite. 
And you know members, all of them move from here to there. So, nobody can face what pastors are facing. And God is saying, irrespective of what they have done to you, forgive. Now listen, one question that I also want to answer is, uh, uh, I wrote it down, please, one minute. Where did I put this one? So that I can balance it. Does forgiveness mean I will forget what has been done against me? No. Forgiveness is not equal to forgetting it. Now listen to what I wrote down. To forgive is to refuse to respond to the negative feeling that crosses your mind even if you still remember what has been done to you. You may and may not forget depending on your memory bank. Forgetting takes time. It takes time to forget. And the reason why it takes time to forget is so that you yourself could can learn from that mistake that wanted to lead to unforgiveness. Now, for instance, do you think I will now put my car down to borrow money for any member again? Never. Do you think I can love members like I love that brother again? Yes. But I've drawn the limit. Now, when things happen, you take the lesson. Am I communicating? Answer me. Ah, we don't have time. Okay, you say, okay, and that brother, that sister, Pastor, you say I should forgive. You say I should forgive. Eh? That sister, I brought him into my house as my house help. Eventually, I saw my husband on top of her. And you say I should forgive. Yes, forgive. But pick the lesson. Remember. What is the remembrance? Don't bring any mature lady into your house again. Your husband is a goat. Oh, God. <laughs> ah, Pastor, you don't understand. Listen to my own case. I, I, I needed a manager to manage my business. And uh, I got the choir master to be in charge of receiving my, the money, the, the profit of the business. Pastor, you don't understand. This choir master, when we, asked, we did accounts, we discovered that he ate almost all our profits. Should I forgive? Yes. What is the lesson? You don't put people in charge of money. Based on religious ground. Autotony. That's why you don't need to be religious to have money. The same way you must not consider religion eh, to employ accountant. Hello? We must get to that point. Don't say because he's speaking in tongues, he'll be a good husband. You don't use speaking in tongues to choose husband. Somebody call me, Papa, eh, I want you to pray. I, I don't pray for people to check who you should marry. I only teach. There are things you check. Nine things you must check. It's not for today. Rise up on your feet. Let's go home. Have you learned something? Be on your feet, be on your feet, be on your feet, be on your feet. Forgive. And don't give people the chance to hurt you again. There are some things you know that if people hurt you, you will never forgive. Like, like Abby, don't give them that chance. For instance, if your friend take your husband, you won't like it. Don't give them the chance. I told us, was it not two weeks ago, that I don't borrow people some things. Abby, is he not here? I shared how my landlord's son, is he not here? Came and said I should borrow him, borrow him blender. Those days I was still a tenant. And I gave him manual blender. He said, no, sir, I want the electric blender. I said, I'm sorry, I don't borrow people such. I told you how one of my friends finished. He came back and said, Pastor, please borrow me your car. I want to use your car to go all out. I told him only one way. You know why I said that? I want to block that avenue. If anything should happen, I may not be able to forgive him. Now, we all know our level of forgiveness. Hello? So, block some things. That, ah, if I give people chance to this point, share, one share me. Somebody came to live in our compound. He has lived with us before, committed so many things, and came back to beg. When he was coming back, I, block, I said, I will give you privilege to live in that Megat house under one condition. Don't work for me, please. He says, I said, don't work. Don't even sweep me. 
I have somebody sweeping for me. To anything that will make me to feel disappointed. Let me just know that you are sleeping and you are going out. Then I noticed that I started washing my car. When I wake up, you wash my car. Yeah, I just cleaned it. So at the end of the month, I gave him some money. He said, what is it? I said, for the, the car you are washing. He said, but I didn't discuss anything. I said, yes. One day, eh? One day somebody will talk to you and say he's using you. You know that we didn't bargain anything. He said, we didn't bargain. For the car you are washing, I'll be giving you like this. And he has been washing that cutie today. That's why the Bible says, guide your heart. For out of it, the issues of life. Begin to pray. The ability to forgive, Lord, let it rest upon me. Begin to pray. Ability to forgive. Every spirit of unforgiveness. Get out of my heart. 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 Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for the word we have had again today. Take all the glory. Apostle God. That will not just be hearers. Make us practitioners of this word. We will live in forgiveness. The way, the way David lived. We will not have our unforgiveness in our heart, oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Open your eyes. Let's pray.